What's up guys, Mr. Scanlon here, and in this video you are going to be learning the basics of Blender 3D. So this is uh, obviously on the path for uh, intro to animation and uh, modeling, uh, 3D modeling, and uh, you know we're using this Blender 3D software. Uh, I'm actually not going to make an entire uh, tutorial series like I did for After Effects and Python, um, and as well as others, mostly because there's already so many good Blender videos out there that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to kind of repeat, um, you know, what people have already done. Uh, you know, there wasn't, there's not always very many good like basic uh, videos for like uh, computer science or After Effects. Maybe some advanced ones, but for Blender, there's tons of really good, uh, you know, just get up and running kind of videos. But that's basically what this is going to be. I just wanted to introduce you guys to the topic and go over a few. Uh, little fun things just to show you what you can do in kind of a short amount of time and uh, just so that I know I explained it well at least the first time for you guys um, and then the other reason is just because I used to use Blender a lot especially uh, in my later years of high school and my early years of college when I did uh, some some films in 3D and stuff and it was a lot of fun but honestly I, in recent years I've been doing more with uh, the uh, like with, with computer science and then maybe so uh, with uh, After Effects as well. So uh, I won't say I've lost my my grip on it, but it's definitely something that I don't uh, personally do as much, and I'd rather leave it to uh, some of the experts to explain some of the finer details and help you where you need be. All right, so in this video, uh, I have Blender 3D already open on screen, and uh, this is exactly what you're going to see as soon as you open it too. There might be like a panel you close out or whatever. But basically, you see basically you see four things on here. You see this grid system here, okay? That's just hovering in space with a green and red axis. You see this cube here which has uh, three axes controls which you can like kind of play around with. You can move this thing around. Um, and then you see uh, this lamp up here. Uh, that you, you're just like, okay, I don't know what that is. And then you also see this like this box here, which is actually your camera, but you probably don't didn't even know what it was, and it's just kind of floating there in 3D space. Now, if you notice, I'm orbiting around this right now. If you're using a Windows with like a regular mouse, this is pretty easy to do. All you got to do is click on the, uh, the wheel, um, like the middle button wheel, and just kind of like click and move around. And that, it, it's pretty easy to move around. Um, if you're on a Mac, it's a little bit more difficult. I'm not sure what the, the shortcut is, but I think it's like control click or something like that. Um, either way, if you're going to be doing 3D modeling in the future, I highly recommend just getting a, like a Windows PC mouse or something. And uh, I know there, we'll, we'll be able to provide a few of those, so um, don't get too worried about it. But I definitely have a mouse like that. So I uh, just want to go over a few things that you can do in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually going to just drag this up kind of so it's like sitting on this platform a little bit, maybe like right there or something. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this sidebar here and go to this Create and click on this uh, Plane Mesh. Now a mesh is basically a 3D object, uh, and except in this case uh, we're making a plane which is basically a non-solid object. You'll see, so if I click it here, it actually pops up here. And I can just drag this guy down. Uh, that's about good right there. And then I'm just basically going to drag this... Uh, underneath uh, the uh, the cube. Now I can make some you know more exact details with this like I can make this really really fine and put it perfectly under the cube but that's good enough for now. So what I want to do to uh, I, I want to make that basically my floor uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this cube right here and click on it and you're going to see this scale panel here. Um, I kind of have a good idea of what I already want so I'm just going to type in like 15 here you notice it got longer right there already, and then a 15 in the Y as well. And now we have like a nice big plane to kind of mess with. Um, both of, of these are gray, so once you get down here, it's kind of hard to see which is which. But uh, So now we have this nice big plane, though. Notice I didn't change anything for the Z, and that's because if I changed stuff for the Z, it would make this basically a giant cube, and we don't want that. We don't want a 15 by 15 by 15 cube. We just want a plane. Alright, um, so now I'm going to select this cube here. In order to select it off of this object and get to the cube, I can't just click on it. I mean, I can if I, if I do it with the, the right, uh, uh, sorry, the, the right button, or sorry, the right clicker on your mouse. I don't know why I couldn't say that. Uh, but you could also just flip between them in this, uh, 
in this scene view up in the upper right hand corner. This is usually what I use because you can be a little bit more exact with uh, clicking on things. So I'm just going to click on the cube here. And uh, basically, I want to color this cube up. So what I can do is I can go to this uh, kind of the, this is like a circle y material thing right here. I'm going to click on that. And it's going to give me another panel here. And basically, all I have to do to make this like, let's I'm going to make this a red cube, okay? Uh, all I have to do to make this a red cube is click on this diffuse, which in case you didn't know, diffuse is basically the uh, color, um, I guess you could call it scheme. Uh, it's a concept to use to describe uh, the color that we see in everyday light. So like, you know, whenever a light bounces off an object and then hits your eye, um, that's like the color you're seeing. That's diffuse. There's some other stuff like specular and uh, there's some uh, diffuse, specular, and ambient. Uh, I believe are the three main uh, graphic concepts that I've I, I learned about this in my gra uh, my graduate courses, and um, th they all have to do with like how you uh, view uh, colors in 3D and in the real world. But diffuse is the main one we're looking at. So just go ahead and click on diffuse, and we're, let's go with uh, the red like we promised. So it's like a nice deep red, something like that. Um, you can pick any color, but we're going to go with red here. And now what I want to do is I actually want to make this, notice the whole thing is red. I actually don't want that. I want this to be like red on top maybe and then like green and blue or something. So in order to change different colors on this square, what you have to do is you have to go down here, uh, see where it says object mode. What you want is you want edit mode, okay? So object mode is great for uh, animation purposes and moving things around. Edit is if you're editing a singular object. So what you do is just select the edit mode and uh, what you're going to do is you're going to hit Control Tab, and it's going to give you this option here. I'm going to click Face, and then all I got to do is click on, uh, right-click on the face that I want. So right there, uh, we'll we'll do that. I don't know which one I said was which. So let's just make this one green. And then what I have to do to turn this guy green right here uh, is go up here, go back to the Material page, and just click this plus button right here, and it's going to say Add New Material Slot. And then just click the new. And uh, we're just going to set the diffuse to, uh, I said green right now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to set it to green. And we're just going to click assign. And once we hit assign, you'll notice that it changes green. And I'll click on this panel now. You, you notice it's, it's totally green, totally green, exactly how we want it. Um, and then if I want this side to be blue, I think I said, well, I need like a light blue. I don't want it to be like that dark blue. I want it like a light blue or something. Uh, just do the same thing. So let's go with. Uh, yeah, like a, like a cyan or something. All right, that's nice. And then just click Assign. So now you notice we have this, uh, uh, I'm just going to go back to object mode to see it like as one whole thing. We, we have this green, blue, and red uh, color scheme going on on this box. The rest of it's red, but we just want that front bit to be uh, different colors. You can change the rest of them at your, uh, at your leisure. All right, so this is looking all right, but you kind of notice everything's unfinished. It just has like an unfinished feel to it. The colors look, I don't know how to describe it exactly, just too static, sort of. They don't look realistic. Um, it kind of looks like if you ever watch like a Pixar documentary, it looks like the, like how they have the, the characters before they're actually like in the movie, before they're ready, you know? Kind of looks like that. Um, here's basically how you see a real rendered image. All you gotta do is go down here and click on this and click on rendered. And you'll, you'll notice immediately how much more realistic this looks. Um, now you don't see the green right here and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why in a second, but you notice immediately this looks so much more realistic. You got lighting, you got shade or shadows. Uh, things just kind of have like a little bit more like realism to them. And you can still click around, but you notice it's like a graphical glitch going on when I do that. It's because the computer's trying to produce such a high quality image that when you're moving around the object like that, it's struggling to uh, to render it out on your computer immediately. So let's just like go back there. Um, I'm gonna go back to solid real quick because I want to fix that. Cause, you know, we we had the shadow issue and we don't want that. So what you can do is you can click on this lamp here, uh, which is the light in your scene. And I'm gonna do two things. The first thing I'm gonna do is just drag this over. So that'll fix most of it. That basically now the lighting is like right there in the scene. So that's gonna point down like where we want it to. Maybe even like, if I lower this down slightly, maybe something like that. 
Uh, so the lighting is like right in our scene now, so that's going to be perfect. Here's our camera. This is the view that we originally started out with when we went to uh, the render. So this is like the this is like a this is the rendered camera view. Uh, actually, I don't think that's how it worked with this, but basically the the camera is like kind of like where you want it to to be. Um, all right, so now it's going to show all three colors which we want, and I'm also going to turn up the energy a little bit, maybe like a one point four something like that. That's that's probably good enough. Notice there's different kinds of lights you can use. Um, a point light is almost as if you took, if you're in a dark room and you shot like a spotlight on something, that's a point light. The sun is, if you wanted it to be like, like it's called, uh, completely lit up everywhere, you would use like a sun. Um, spotlight is similar to that. And then hemisphere and area are kind of like, like two, uh, like these are more like global lighting systems. So I'm just going to go with this and let's go ahead and render this out. Notice that it looks immediately better. Like we actually do look like we're, you know, getting ready to render into like a, a, a Pixar movie or something like that. It looks so much more high quality uh, than before. Uh, this, sorry, this is actually bothering me real quick. This cube is just one centimeter off from the ground. That's good right there. Okay, let's let's go back to render view. All right, much better, much better. And we got the so we got the nice green and blue and red coloring, and then we got the shade. This looks great. Um, so that's pretty much it for this video. Except I wanted to go over one more important concept, uh, and that's just a little bit of basic animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to uh, the solid view here. Oh, real quick, if you want, you can check out this wireframe mode, which I think is kind of cool. Sometimes it just shows the frames. Uh, so non-colored, non-facing uh, textures and stuff like that. Um, this is like like a very wholesome view. This is how they used to animate things. If you ever watch a, a an old, old Pixar documentary, not an do old documentary, but an old video and a documentary about Pixar, this is like what they used to have to use. They always use like wireframes to build 3D models and stuff like that because that's all it's based off of at the end of the day. Uh, back to solid though. Um, so, actually, let's let's make the plane a different color too now. So I'm just going to add this, and you kind of notice that the color already changed. But let's just make this like a light, kind of like a sun-kissed yellow or sun-kissed sand look, something like that. That's fine. And if we re-render this, looks a lot, looks a little bit nicer maybe. All right, that's all I wanted to do there. But um, okay. So, oops, didn't want to grab this cube. All right, so basically to do animation, uh, it's pretty simple in, in here. It's actually easier to do animation in Blender than it is in After Effects, at least basic animation. Uh, advanced animation is obviously going to be more difficult because you're using like um, arms and stuff like that. that. That can be a little bit more complex. Uh, there's ways to make it much easier, though. So we're going to start it off on this side. And basically, we want this block to just end up over there, and we want to like actually animate. We want to like play like kind of like a video of this animation going on. So what we can do is we can uh, basically click this uh, red button here. This is the automatic keyframe insertion. There's other ways to uh, put in keyframes, of course, but we just want to do like an automatic one. So we're just going to start here. Look at this timeline down here. Notice how we have a green slot right here. Um, I'm just going to like kind of like jiggle that around. So now notice like it's like yellow green. We just added a keyframe. This automatic keyframe generation basically makes it so that whenever we move this thing, and our, and our timeline's already set, um, it adds a keyframe. What's a keyframe, for those of you who don't know, uh, who didn't do After Effects yet? Um, a keyframe basically stores two things. It stores um, placement and time. So at zero seconds here, uh, it's storing the block at this position. So then we'll move um, 60 frames into the future. 60 fr I think it's running at 30 frames per second right now. Uh, 60 frames per second, uh, it was much faster. So yeah, if it's if it's 30 FPS, this is basically two seconds into the future right here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to move this to the other side of the uh, of the plane here, and then I'll just move the timeline out of the way. Uh, notice we have two keyframes here now. So if I go back to the start here, and then I just hit this play button, boom! Look at that. Over two seconds, we have a nice simple animation with this uh, cube which is pretty neat. And we can add more too. Like I'll add maybe like one right here. So we'll say it goes to this point at that point in time. And then another one 
right here and uh, we'll move up a little bit more in time and then we'll move this one down here or something like that so we'll just kind of zoom out and watch this thing uh, watch this thing go so if we start here and we just hit the play button there it goes. You notice it. It's it's actually moving on screen, and you notice it's got like a nice acceleration and then deceleration to it as well. Um, that's kind of the power that Blender gives you. Like you wouldn't see that some like something like that in After Effects. It's not going to give you that nice uh, touch where it just automatically sets in the uh, that acceleration. Can see how it just decelerates. It's that's much cleaner than most animation you're going to get out of the box. So uh, Blender is definitely very good with something like that. All right, so that's it. You know, this is a 16 minute video right here. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys like a very basic intro into this thing and just kind of show you that this is not, uh, even though it's kinda, it's got a lot of 3D stuff in here, this is not an application to be afraid of at all. This is a very cool, simple app that um, you can do a lot of great things in. There's been all kinds of uh, large uh, animations and even games that people produced with Blender 3D because it's such a powerful open source software. All right, so I hope you uh, enjoy using Blender 3D uh, more in the future as much as I did when I used to uh, develop with it. Um, and I hope, uh, I hope you uh, just continue on with the, the tutorials that uh, I'm, I'm uh, giving you inside the notes and uh, everything goes well. So that's it for this one. Um, I'm, I might add some more Blender uh, videos in the future if requested. So uh, just uh, keep a lookout. See you next time.